so first I would like to uh, to thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity to speak to you the remote way, but I think the the weather is very similar, so um, that makes the distance a bit shorter. So the uh, the title you see uh, on the screen. So this is Stochastic Tools in Finance. My name is Dariusz Gatarek. I currently work in Warsaw. There is, uh, okay. So you see my CV on the screen. So I'm a man say halfway between academia uh, and industry. So maybe, maybe I try to be in both of them. So uh, I try, maybe I'm not always successful uh, to, to solve real world problems, but to keep the academic rigor. Uh, and, yes. Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, we, you, if you want to share your screen, you have to share it again. Again, okay. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, again, again, again. Where is that? Where should I click? Ah, share screen. Okay. Come on, share screen. Uh, yeah. Ah, yes, continue, below. continue, and this one. Yeah. Okay. Do you? Uh, no, not do full. You... Uh, no, 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 now he's now okay. charging. Yeah, okay, now. okay, so let's start. Now it's working. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start from the beginning. So that will be the title of the talk Stochastic Tools in Finance. And uh, that the talk will consist of 10 hours of lectures. So, okay, nine hours of lectures because every hour, every lecture will be around 15 minutes. And I would like to cover all the interesting uh, classes of assets. I'm not putting uh, commodities here because I didn't Okay, I'm not an expert in that field. Uh, this is me. So I'm a guy who spent 20 years with uh, industry, 20 plus years in academia. So I try to solve uh, real world problems, keeping the rigor of academia. And uh, where do we start? So. I was told all of you know uh, basics on uh, uh, asset pricing. Is that true? So probably no, no one said no. So that pr be probably, uh, probably true, but uh, what is my problem with internet lectures uh, in Europe, especially in Europe, in America, it's not that bad. Problem is that I speak to my screen and my screen doesn't reply to me. Mm, I don't know if anyone is there uh, listening or doing something or not doing anything. Uh, so I would like you, the participants of that course, to, to be active, so to ask questions, interrupt me. Uh, I will ask you questions. Uh, because this is, I think, the only way to make the internet lectures alive in interactions 
in the in the lecture room even if you don't speak but <coughs> i may see uh, if you are interested or not here i know nothing and that will be <coughs> my first question namely uh, i guess you are phd students but I would like all of you to say say a few words about yourself, about your plans for the future. So especially once I'm interested in one thing, uh, this is academia or industry. So that uh, lecture should be more academic or more practical. The change will not be massive, but some accents accents may be different so uh okay starting i don't know with, with whom so use the your voice or chat it's up to you is anyone going to to say some words hello are you there Okay, uh, nobody is, is interested, that's too bad. But okay, let me continue. No, you have some, oh, you, you yeah, have a... Okay. Yes. There are people the saying chat. things on chat. Uh, uh, where I can find, okay, meeting control, no Zoom cloud. Where is that? You, you vanished speak, from my screen. Uh, if so. not, Joseph, you can read to him. Yeah, I can read chat. Okay, yes. Uh, uh, one says, uh, my interest would be in the intersection between academia and industry. Uh, and therefore, I wouldn't, matter, I wouldn't matter either approach. This is one answer. Uh, for the moment, no more. Um, I'm a PhD student in the University of Barcelona. Uh, I would be happy to experience industrial experiences. Yeah, so uh, one more, be brave. Be brave, that will make, uh, imagine um, I, the situation. So uh, I, I, there I, must be interaction. Yeah, another is interested in the industry but enjoy the rigor of the academia. Uh, I will also speak since no one is speaking. Uh, I'm more interested from the industrial perspective since I have been into many academic courses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm happy with your answers. It's Pete, the does of you. Uh, so the, the second, my second question, are you happy with that part of that, uh, of that slide? So where are we to start? So I assume you know everything about Black Scholes and uh, arbitrage, put call parity definitions of options, so I don't have to repeat it. And you know basic stochastic calculus. So winner process is the absolute minimum. But say Gerson of formula, Martin Gales, are you okay with that? Uh, from security link. Uh, everyone says yes. <laughs> yes, all right, all right. So let's get the hard stuff. Uh, in what word do we believe? So when we are speaking about equity, so we've got the following notions. First one is short rate, which represents the uh, time value of money. So that's uh, a part which is contained in this country. The second is the 
dividend rate. So uh, sometimes stocks pay dividend, sometimes not, but probably uh, dividend rate is uh, from mathematical point of view shows us how remote from the martingale, martingale dynamics is the dynamics of the underlying asset. And that's, I would say, fundamental uh, notion in the uh, foreign currency market. And a question for you, uh, what is dividend rate in the FX world? Did anyone answer? Fast answer. Okay, the answer is off the screen, of course. It's the short rate for the foreign currency. When we price options on the uh, on the in the currency market on the foreign currency, so the short rate is the short rate for our currency and dividend rate is the dividend for the foreign currency. And we, of course, may change numeral and get uh, dividend as the short rate and short rate as the dividend. Uh, sigma is volatility, so that's probably, you know, you know perfectly what it is. So it's the measure of uncertainty. Uh, S will be underlying, so a stock, foreign currency, anything else we would like to price, everything, and D is discounting. So in, in our case, during these lectures, discounting is, is just exponent of the of the short trade. And we've got, of course, the formula for call option, which is discounted uh, difference between the underlying and the strike price. So this is the positive part, negative part. And uh, one more thing, everything is stochastic. I'm not assuming anything of that to be a deterministic process because actually they are not. So in practice, uh, short right is uncertain, nothing is certain in, the, in financial markets. So underlying price, you cannot predict anything. Okay, so that's the moment when you started, when you assumed that short rate dividend, so uh, volatility are time independent. So this is my first typo I've noticed. And deterministic. So uh, then probably this is a, a simple property for you. So maybe the only sophisticated part of deriving the Black and Scholes formula, which is, which is on the screen, was that playing with the, uh, with the number, yes, because the, simplest derivation of Black and Scholes formula is one to take the riskless bond as numeral, then switch to the risky asset as numeral, and then we've got to uh, pr probabilities under various Gaussian measures and get a plain formula, which uh, 
which looks like that. So some that 50 years ago, it was an achievement. Now, for us all, uh, this is Uh, this looks rather obvious, but of course with that formula and uh, derivatives of that formula, we may play and der derive some deep properties. So, but as I said before, nothing is deterministic in financial markets and that assumptions that uh, you may easily accept that fu future is not to be predicted. So, and probability is probably the best measure of uncertainty. So, uh, how to deal with that uh, if all the parameters are not as they are in our uh, perfect world. So the easy part is uh, just to average them. So if we assume that short rate, dividend rate, uh, volatility are determined time dependent, but still deterministic. We just take the average and uh, and just don't care. So this uh, all the theory goes and Uh, that's a result that was not even published. So obvious. In some book, in Black and Scholz formula, formula is even uh, published in the uh, in that setting, but. Okay, let us go a step further and uh, remember how our work looks like. Uh, that we uh, okay from the beginning. So we academician would like to think the following way. Uh, we have a model which looks like that. Then we've got a formula. We've got dynamics. Uh, and knowing the input parameters, we would like to have prices as outputs. But the market is the other way around. Yes, so what are our observables in the markets? Option prices. We've got option prices for various maturities, for various strike prices. And uh, actually, we don't know what model dri what models drive them. So we would like to think uh, that our model describes reality, but in fact, we don't know why we don't know that. Because, okay, in physics, when we throw a stone, 
we may relatively well observe its trajectory and and write down some formulae. But when we deal with probability, so that's that's nothing to be to be captured. Uh, if you remember discussion about background of quantum physics some 100 years back. So physicists were very unhappy with the probabilistic interpretations of the wave function. They didn't want the world to be indeterministic. So there is, a, say, some mark interpretation by the Broy that uh, waves of, of probability are not waves of probability, but just uh, some other strange notions. So, so the reasons for that were two. So one is. Uh, people are not happy with the uncertainty. They would like, you would like to be certain. But the, <laughs> the second one is that probability is very difficult to estimate. But we've got, of course, one tool to capture probability. Mm, anyone knows what is that? I'm waiting for, a, for an answer. Type something. Did anyone guess, Joseph? <laughs> wow. Don't switch off your microphone. Uh, no. no. Nobody. No, nobody. Yeah, OK. So let me answer that answer. Uh, or maybe this is uh, this is good time for the first story, and the story is about Fisher Black, who loved the majestic way of lecturing. So, but in, in America, it's it's much more common than in Europe. So, his way was to. Uh, to put on the blackboard a question and wait for the answer or an attempt of answer from the room. And if someone started to, to think, to, to try to answer, of course, he would contribute and the lecture would continue. But when he, he had silence, he just waited, sometimes until the end of the semester. So. Uh, okay, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to to work that way. Uh, the answer is statistics. Yes, we may. How we may know that uh, probability of heads of tails of a coin is 50%. We just throw a coin many times. We believe in the uh, law of large numbers and believe that uh, probability of heads is the average number of heads. And that's, that's the way uh, how we may guess model parameters for probability uh, in probability. But there is one but in, in finance. An attempt to answer is one problem. OK, uh, 10 seconds. I will wait 10 seconds. OK, nobody tries to answer. Too, but uh, the problem is that we cannot repeat that experiment. 
So that's uh, what's the problem uh, academicians have with the financial markets, stock markets. The trajectories don't repeat. So April is different from Facebook and from General Motors. And even face behavior of Facebook stocks is different this year than it was the last year. Because uh, in financial markets, we've got intelligent players. Players who want to uh, to make money. And some of them make money. So the more clever ones profit at the expense of the of those who know the market worse. So uh, what for was the philosophical introduction here? But that's important because we've got a uh, reverse situations. We don't have a model as input, but the model is output. Term structure and capital structure of option pricing is the data for probability measures. And we, of course, know how to get probability density uh, from the option pricing, yes, from from that formula or that formula exactly. It's the second derivative. The probability density is the second derivative of the of the option pricing. And what this picture means? This picture, of course, means that the probability distribution of the option prices is not a Gaussian. Yes? Because if it was Gaussian, how would the picture look like? And I want an answer from, from the room, from the participants for that question. So it's probably the only one. So the question is, assume the market is driven by the Gaussian, Gaussian dynamics. How would this picture look like? Huh? Joseph? Uh, yes, uh, yes, there are answers like a sideline, flat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know who's given that, but uh, by the way, what marks do you have in in Spain? Numbers from zero to because in Germany the highest mark is one. No, and... yes, from uh, typically from zero to ten. Ah, okay. So ten. I'm giving ten. Uh, that would be a straight line. And this is, but this picture, so what does it mean? Uh, we should scratch the Black and Charles theory. Not that way, that Black and Charles approach to option prices, because this is not a straight line. Black and Scholz a theory of option prices is a way of quoting, of putting all the prices into one framework. Because when we look at this formula, we find some parameters that we expect to know. So this is short rate dividend right. The only one that we don't know is the volatility. So there is one-to-one -one 
relation between option price and its volatility. And the, the volatility determining option price is called implied volatility. So it's the volatility which represents to the actual option price. And there is a, a say, funny derivations of Black and Scholes formula by Paul Wilmot in the form of discussion between uh, him and uh, a representative of the marketing department. So the guy of marketing department requires the formula for option prices that would be optimal from the sales point, point of view. And then they, in this, in this discussion, in this dialogue, uh, derive to the Black and Scholes formula. I don't know if it is written, I've heard it in, in a lecture by Paul. Okay, so, uh, and that, I think that is the most important and maybe only motivation for the Black and Scholes formula. But this is the only way how Black and Scholes formula is used to produce the way how we price options to create a quotation to create implied volatility. That's, there is little mathematics here in what, what I said. Yes, but this is, uh, I think, the main problem that a mathematicians got in a bank or in a hedge fund, say the first three years of employment, that Models are not known, but prices are not known. Are known. Okay. Uh, what we see in this picture. So, if someone answers, I will be happy. But uh, of course, I'll give the answer. So, in this picture, we see there is a line. This line is not straight. So we've got a bit curvature of this line, yes, it's curved. It looks like that. And it is a bit skewed as well. It is not flat, not straight, but uh, it goes on the left a bit up. Mm. And that's, that's important. That is something we may translate into mathematics. So, and in market behavior. So curvature, so symmetric smile, smile because uh, it looks, curvature looks like a smile, yes? So we are happy, we may be unhappy, but in practice this is. So we go on both sides a bit up. So symmetric smiles curvature is the fourth moment of the distribution. And the reason for that in the market, so this is what I guess and what other people guess as well, is the uncertainty of future prices. I will show you how to express it uh, how to express it in mathematical terms. And that, that uh, line is not symmetric, is the third moment of the distribution of the of option prices. And its interpretations is fear of crisis. Because when stock prices fall down, we may be afraid that something uh, will happen. So when 
Have you things happens, volatility grows, and then we've got such asymmetry. So, but remember, this is my guess. I don't know other people's minds. Okay. So why uh, we have um, why the symmetric smile, the curvature, uh, is caused by uncertainty. So imagine a toy model. When our stock dynamics is driven by everything deterministic, so we've got deterministic short trade, deterministic dividend trade, and volatility is uncertain the simplest possible way. So what's the simplest uncertainty? So let it be just a random variable, discrete random variable with several values. Let us say two, but it's, that's, not, uh, that's not important. And of course, probability of every of those values of the value sigma k is pk. And of course, uh, sum of the probabilities is equal one. And then let us calculate the implied Black and Scholes volatility. So you really remember what is implied volatility? It's the volatility that represents the actual option price. And we've got a simple theorem that the function is continuous, uh, monotonic, so without problems we may uh, we've got these equations got one solution, which is easy to find. So when we calculate the implied volatility of such a toy model, what we get that implied volatility for Aha, implied volatility is, of course, a function of strike price. Yes, we've got only one maturity at the moment. So when we've got um, implied volatility of this study model, when we tend with strike price towards extremes, so either this is zero, so very low strike price, or infinity, the implied volatility tends to the higher, to the highest level of, of volatility of those discrete, discrete values. This is elementary mathematics. And uh, we've got this, this picture. So then, of course, that, that was a toy model. But that model um, maybe made much more sophisticated. So sigma uh, may be taken uh, an arbitrary stochastic process, but still independent on the Brownian motion driving the dynamics of the And in such case, we will have the 
symmetric smile. So I would say a part of the of the problem is solved. But the, even probably even the more sophisticated part, uh, because we know how to deal with uh, with the first moment. About the third moment, I will tell you later. But. Uh, so this is, uh, what model is that, Elisa? The most known, you remember? Helen White, Stochastic Volatility, yes? Yes, yes, I remember the use. Yeah, that's that's Helen White. Uh, that's the one stochastic process, time and tight, another stochastic process. So there is, there is a number of, any stochastic process may be put uh, here to the to the sig as the sigma, and uh, we will find a, a name linked to that model, or two names, or say one name uh, repeated, Stein and Stein. Yes. Uh, so that's but there is one but. If the stochastic process sigma um, is ergodic, so uh, in mathematical terms, ergodic means on the average tending to, to a value. So practically, in financial terms, this is called mean reverting, and practically all the uh, all the known stochastic processes are ergodic. So, stochastic processes either explode or are ergodic in practice. I'm not saying about about theory. In theory, they may behave anyway we would like. Uh, so, when we've got Energetic uh, stochastic process, like in the Hall and White, the smile will flatten when we tend with the maturity, capital T, towards infinity. And as you may guess, uh, in practice, it is not because we may say, remember that statement. In practice, it is not. So when we uh, arrive with theory to some statement, we may finish it with, in practice, it is not. Uh, in practice, smiles don't flatten, but the opposite, they pronounce as maturity goes towards infinity. And there are some ways how to deal with that. And probably the, the best idea was by Pat Hagan, but that is not that important. Uh, I think that's the time to make a break. Or yes, uh, we can make a ten-minute break. Uh, 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 for example, the Sabor model is not mean reverting. It's not mean reverting. Yes, but it is. Is it, a, is it ergodic? No, it's not ergodic. Okay, okay. Sabor is not ergodic. Uh, so, so that's uh, okay. Da mean reverting sables because sable is not one model, but say ten models at least. Okay. Okay. Let's so let's proceed. So uh, we were able 
so far to model relatively cheaply curvature or symmetric smile. It depends what, what language we use, mathematics or finance. Uh, and what about the skew asymmetricity? So that, of course, is much easier. And because it's the third moment. And what we may do, we may replace a linear function here in the black scholes like modified Black and Scholes equation by a shift. That tell makes the model asymmetric. Or take a power of the asset price in the volatility term. And uh, this second model is called uh, constant elasticity of variance. CEV, and both of them are used in practice. So that's uh, probably the simplest and cheapest uh, way how to produce a model that relatively well fits the option prices for at least one uh, maturity. But what's wrong with those models? Mm. They are artificial. So that's uh, CEV is quite popular. Uh, displays diffusion is in the, in the interest rate web, so interest rates you will have tomorrow or maybe after tomorrow, depends. Uh, but they are artificial, then don't show, uh, because a comment, why uh, in finance there are so many models, not, okay, uh, Black and Scholes is the benchmark, but then when we go to stochastic volatility, to modeling smile, we've got say 100 models and they are in practice they are all used so they are not uh, not purely academic but because they have to answer some say practical questions which are even uh, not uh, Difficult to formulate. By the way, did anyone uh, work in the in the industry of the participants? Okay, so um, no answer is negative answer, I guess. No, no, no. That is yes. some of them. Some of them. I know that. So some why of... they don't reply? <laughs> 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 okay, so I will answer. So uh, talking to traders is difficult because uh, they are intelligent people. Traders are generally intelligent. Uh, some of them are quite well educated even in mathematics. But so they need a reality, which what, how this reality looks like. So they've got uh, some dots on the screen. The dot depends on what happens. So if uh, they buy cheaper uh, than sell, they get bonus. When they uh, buy more expensive than, than sell, they may be fired. So. 
So it's a situation of a sailor 500 years back or something. So there is a cruel sea, unknown sea, and uh, we have to survive and to profit of that. So when they talk to you, to me, who's got a good mathematical education and uh, the talks about finance in mathematical terms. Uh, so I may be wrong, but I've got a picture. I've got an imagination what happens. They don't have, so they create a language, a theory, what happens. So you've had, pro of course, about technical analysis, about uh, so the vocabulary of technical analysis is, uh, uh, is magic, so three witches or something like Macbeth uh, terms, but that's a way to express the, the ideas they have in mind. So I'm happy. I say CEV, Helen White models and so on, and I may be wrong, but I've got a language. Okay, so let us go further well uh, and i think this is the proper way of modeling the skill so remember that picture this asymmetry all in terms of probability third moment of the option underlying distribution. The proper way, proper, that means it is intuitive and shows more or less how prices are created, is correlations. Yes, because when I was speaking about my toy model, I said that stochastic volatility and the underlying are not correlated. No, not an un underlying, but the winner process driving the underlying are not correlated. But that's just not true because everything is correlated. So when we take, so forget for the moment, this is just this formula but think about any formula, but with a winner process view. So a stochastic differential equation. And correlation between these two winner processes produces exactly the asymmetry, the third moment. And that's practically 90% of the skew modeling. So uh, everyone agrees that the proper way to model skew is to take correlated stochastic volatility and the winner process driving the stock price or exchange rate. Okay, so now uh, let us use some names. So the, that was the first model of correlation. So that was um, published in some 93, maybe 94 by Steve Heston. Uh, and here we've got the driving process, say the, the usual Black and Scholes, generalized Black and Scholes equation. Here we've got something like what? I'm just testing your mathematical knowledge. It's a question not to Elisa and Joseph. 
only to students. What is that? What kind of process? Use one, one name. Joseph, did anyone answer? Um, uh, yes, uh, let me see. Um, C CIR model, CIR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, this is for finance guys, for mathematicians, this is Bessel. So uh, this is a Bessel process which describes uh, a square of inner process and distance between the central point and square of Bessel process. So, and there is a nice and big theory of Bessel processes that are all possible formulas, most of them by Marchiora, I guess. Yes, so that's probably one of the more clever guys in the field. After David, of course. Uh, and uh, we've got closed formulae for Heston model. So we've got closed formulae for, uh, for option prices uh, in Heston model. So that's probably why this is considered so important. Aha, I would like, uh, maybe I should make uh, that comment at the very beginning of the talk, but I'm making that. So you will see some mathematical proofs, but no one of them will be longer than two slides. So when something uh, is longer, I just omit it. So it's not possible to give a reasoning on uh, on slides. It must be a blackboard. So just believe me. Uh, I know uh, two relatively easy methods uh, to derive closed formulae for Heston model. So one is by Laplace transform and the second by moment matching. But at the end of the talk, I will tell you about general methods, how to deal with option pricing in such model. The second one is so-called Sable model. So stochastic alpha beta rho. Uh, that's a quite popular model and becoming more and more practical. So at the moment of publication, it was rather pure academic. Then the various versions. So uh, why Sable is so popular? Mm. That's the answer. Uh, we've got closed formulas, but not for approximate, but these approximations are relatively accurate. Not for option prices, but what's for practitioners even more interesting for the implied volatility. You've got an expansion. So, uh, Mm, Pat Hagen, who is one of the authors of the model, so probably the driving force, but uh, is a guy from, say, traditional mathematical modeling in the 19th century terms. So Pat loves lengthy formulas and not general theorems about existence, uniqueness, and so on. So in America, you, in Ra and Russia, and Russia, you may meet such people, but uh, so that's it. Uh, 
you may find in books formula for the Heston model for the uh, SAP model. Okay, I don't see any any sense of putting lengthy formulas in this in this presentation. Just believe me, uh, it's working. Longer, I will tell you about another model, which is probably less practical, but more important conceptually. This is due to Bruno Dupier, published in 94, I think. Mm. Something very similar was done by Emmanuel Delman and, and Iraq Kani, Kani de Seguia. Uh, Emmanuel did it in, uh, in discrete time, so that his paper is not very clear. And, uh, but I think Bruno paper, I'm not going to present you his proof because it's too little general. It's probably one of most beautiful things in mathematics I've ever seen. So it's, uh, I think being mathematician, a mathematician is for beauty as well, yes? Not only for, for I don't know applications or but to have fun. Okay, so uh, that's one of few results. I'm going to prove completely because there are only two slides. So let us take the uh, aha, and I'm uh, presenting that in the most general form. So uh, that's uh, published only in my papers, not uh, you don't find it elsewhere in the computer Mancani papers or books containing that. They, for some reasons, I don't know why, uh, take short rate and dividend uh, deterministic. So that's important, they are not deterministic. And in practice, they are not. Okay, so let us take the black, the model I think belongs to, now let us call it black, black and Scholes formula, black and Scholes equation. So, uh, Although they had these parameters were de deterministic. So uh, let us take Black and Scholes uh, equation. So this is the dynamics of the asset. Here, dynamics of the discount factor. And then apply eta. Tanaka formula to that. Uh, so, if you remember eta formula, this is second. So we take the stochastic differential for a function of a uh, of a term which dynamics we have in the form of eta differential, we take second derivative of the of the function here plus first derivative uh, times volatility square dt plus first derivative and eta differential of the 
underlying process. And a comment, this is probably the most important part of the stochastic analysis for deterministic processes or we've got only the chain rule here. That term doesn't exist. But here is a term that we have to add to the differential when we deal with uh, winner process. That's, do you agree? That's the biggest contribution to stochastic analysis because everything results from data formula. And of course, the uh, Tanaka contribution was that this formula uh, holds also when the second derivative of the, of the function is a Schwarz distrib distribution. So here, this delta is direct delta. Uh, and it's all right. It's, it's working. Then we take expected value of that term. So the term before DW vanishes, yes, because uh, increments of either process are on average are equal to zero. And we take expected value of that delta and expected value of that is term. And after some algebra, we have the, the following formula that increment of the, I remind you, that should be here. C is the price of the call option. So differential versus derivative of the call option with respect to time minus second derivative of the call option with respect to the strike price. I remind you, this is the density uh, of the probability measure multiplied by conditional expectation of the square of volatility X was expected value of that term. So this counting of that of that term. So a bit algebra more. And that part may be easily replaced by that. integral. Yes, so here remind you second derivative of the call option price is the density. And that expectation is the expectation with respect to the forward measure. So tomorrow or after, to, or after tomorrow, we will hear a bit more about the forward measure. But this is formally, it is defined so. So D, so this counting is the density. The modification with respect to the original Dupuis formula is here. Uh, I think there is a question in the chat, Darius. Yes. I read, uh, read Heston, do the time series of volatility confirm a square root Bessel process? Or do we use it mainly for easy of calibration and to get a skew? 
May I see that? Uh, okay, I want to repeat, please. So, about Heston mother, yes. Right, Heston, uh, do the time series of volatility confirm a square root vessel process, or do we use it mainly for easy of calibration and to get a skew? Uh, so, vessel, this is vessel process. This uh, the equation for the volatility is a better process. And just, okay, if a branch of mathematics is exploited, you've got more and more formulae and terms, and uh, it's easier to build on better process, uh, on better process some prices for something, uh, more complex, so the adding the underlying dynamics doesn't, in terms of mathematical complexity, doesn't change much. So roughly speaking, I will uh, I will comment uh, will comment further. Uh, on that, so I will say some words on on uh, calculating option prices for Bessel Pro, for Heston models, Sabre model, and others. Okay, so uh, we've got here the slightly modified Dupuis formula. Okay, what if uh, we take go back to the original Dupier and take that short rate and, uh, and dividend rate, take deterministic. So what happens? So after some algebra, this term simplifies, namely to that part. So that's all the all the play of mm, mm, of derivatives. So secondary school or oh, analysis one. Something I didn't have during my studies. So we started with functional analysis was modern French way education. Uh, so secondary school differentiations and we've got that formula, which is normally called uh, the pure formula. And then when we assume that the sigma, the stochastic volatility, is just a function of the underlying end time. So there is no extra stochastic component in, in, in the dynamics of the volatility. The model is called local volatility. So it's, there, is a, there must be a slang in, in this business. So don't ask me why this is called local. Okay, but what do we have in this situation? So look, we've got here sigma, which is uh, the only model parameter, yes? Because both short rate R and dividend rate are known, are observables. More, C, call option prices, but we've put options, we've got the same uh, situation. Maybe plus is now put, this is, this is call and this is, so it's the same. Second derivatives is exactly the same. 
but let's stick to color options because they they were important in the in the original setting okay so we've got one two three observables yes and one here unknown modern parameter so what we have what this result consists of direct link in a form of a easy algebraic formula limiting market observables with model parameter yes so uh, as i told you talking lengthy lengthy about this uh, this picture calibration is the most important part of finance because a quant so that's you probably know that we are called quants quantitative analysts and short form quants uh, they don't know models they assume models with some common sense assumptions but uh, models are not given by the market but the market gives some other data which which are important and if we assume here that sigma is dependent only on s on the underlying and r and t are deterministic we've got a close algebraic formula for the local volatility so that's an achievement and without optimization just uh, we we add some numbers subtract and everything is all right of course it is not so it would be if we lived in perfect world but but we don't mm. because uh, there is something i forgot i didn't forgot i didn't just tell you quite uh, substantial for the business and this once got an idea what didn't i tell you empty yes uh, for uh, uh, empty for the moment Yes, empty. So I didn't. I was talking all the time about current moment, time cut now. Yes, we've got several prices, a model which has to, to link them. And, but it's not the situations, we've got dynamics. We had some prices yesterday. We will have the, some prices tomorrow. All quants and traders live in town as human beings. In town. Humans live in temples, yes. Angels live in Egum, in another time. So we live in the normal times which evolves step by step uh, and that's the the main flow of the uh, 
uh, of the local volatility model. Because that produces um, a wrong prediction of the uh, of the smile skew. So that produces wrong hatches. So from practical point of view, this is rather, I wouldn't say useless, but murky. Mm. I will ask one more question. What's in your opinion, and the question is for Joseph and Elisa as well, and Adrian, not only for students, is the main contribution of the Black and Charles paper. In my opinion, there are several. No, sorry, 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 I'm lying. Uh, not that paper, of the Merton paper. Robert Martin Piper, which was parallelly published to the Black and Shores. What's the main contribution of that paper? Um, Merton contributed dividends, maybe? Or? The 73 paper, Merton, on the pricing of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, What's yeah. the main contribution? One word. Do you have an idea? I will answer, of course. Uh, so my answer, but not only mine, uh, is hatching. There is an answer in the chat. I can't read it. Hmm? It says uh, correlating the price of a stock to the price no. of the option. No. The okay. contra Re Merton replication, another answer. Yeah, replication? yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Replication hedging. Uh, because, okay, let's go back for a while to the trading room and look at traders, at their life. So they look at screens and take these decisions uh, by phone or pressing buttons, it's irrelevant, and their doubt depends on their decisions. So what they would like working that way day after day, four years sometimes, what are they dreaming of? They are dreaming of reducing their risk. They could even sacrifice a part of the profit for say more stable working conditions. So the replic they call it hatching. So replications was uh, of very special value for traders because it gave them the possibility to, to reduce risk, to control risk. So sometimes they, they want to take risk because they believe, uh, they believe the market will behave one or another way. But other risk they would like to reduce. So why this, uh, this lengthy comment of the Dupier model? So because Dupier produces wrong hedges, that makes it useful for various purposes, reporting for instance, but, but for every day's trader's life, it may be dangerous. So, um, what they want to do? No. Okay, changing order. Uh, they invented 
a model which is, I would say, one around 100% of practical applications. It's called local stochastic volatility. And you probably see uh, how it works. You may guess, yes, after that introduction, that stochastic volatility is divided into two parts. One is a stochastic process constructed one on, on or another way. The second part is the local volatility, which is relatively easy to fit. And combining both of them, we may expect mm, this method will work. And it does so far. So at the moment, as far as I know, nobody invented anything better. One more funny thing about uh, local DPU formula, which is quite important. This is Markovian projection. So we've got here, we are back in the, the most general, where dividend rate and short rate are random. So then we take this formula here and differentiate that once, twice again with respect to K. And what we get, so uh, you should see it Maybe you don't, but I will tell you, don't worry. This is a focal planck equation. Focal planck equations for a, a stochastic process. Uh, and this stochastic process looks like that. That uh, the underlying follows this Markovian, Markovian equation and this counting is so constructed. And what we have European options for both models. So our quite complicated model and this one reduced to single dimension coincide. And one more comment. So Markovianus is the most difficult stochastic property to test quantitat uh, in a quantitative way, yes? Because if something is a martingale or not, it's, it's easy to test. So we calculate drift, if it is there, zero, it is a martingale, if not, it, uh, but it is not. But when we take a process, how do we know it is a Markov process? It's a totally empirical process. We don't know, it may be Markov and, uh, or not. And since in the financial markets, the most liquid options are European options. And we built all the theory on those prices Mm, we practically don't know if our 
dynamics is Markovian or not. So for some purposes, and that's again a question for which ones, we may uh, assume dynamics is Markovian. So that's again a dirty trick against mathematics, but okay, the, that vi violation is, uh, is not much brutal. And I will tell you a bit about uh, practical applications of Markovian projections. So uh, Okay, I think it's uh, the 10 minutes for questions time. Yes. Yes, okay. yes, but if there are no questions, I will probably present two or three slides to, to complete the, the presentations. Okay, so. Okay, are, are there any questions? Maybe you can write uh, on the chat.